Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming today for joining us for this NCAR Explorer Series Student Opportunities event. My name is Dr. Lorena Medina Luna, and I work in NCAR in the Education and Outreach Department. I'm an education specialist. And um, if you're not familiar with NCAR, it's the National Center for Atmospheric Research, and it's located in Boulder, Colorado. But today, everybody here will be presenting actually from their own homes. Um, so thank you for welcoming in, us into your own spaces. NCAR is a world leading organization dedicated to the study of the atmosphere, the Earth system, and the sun. And I'm very excited to you today because we have a panel of program leads, scientists, and the student who's, who participated in scientific research um, in the past. And so we have an opportunity for you all to learn about what opportunities are available um, and what you can apply for starting this fall. And um, we hope you can apply. And if you have any questions, we are using the Slido interface. So as you're logged on, if you scroll down the page, you'll notice there's a Slido window that you could join. You can ask us some questions through that. And we actually have a poll that's running that asks the question, what do you think of when you hear science research internship? So we'll come back to that word cloud in a bit, give you some time to put in your, um, to put in your answers. Um, and if you haven't uh, explored our NCAR Explorer series website, definitely check it out. We have a whole bunch of different lectures and conversations with scientists from across different labs at NCAR and some of the member universities where you can learn more about the research that's going on and maybe some research that you might be involved with if you're um, applying and you uh, virtually come to work at NCAR. UCAR or UCP. So I'm going to just quickly introduce our panelists before going to our word cloud. So first today we're going to have Jerry Sicconi. He is a student program coordinator at NCAR. Hi Jerry. Hello everyone. Then we also have AJ Lauer. She's the program director for the Sci Parks program at NCAR. Hi AJ. Hi everyone. We also have Kadidia Tierro. She is a program lead for the SOURCE program under UCAR Syed. Hi, Kadidia. Good afternoon, everyone. We also have Rosimar Rios Berrios. She is a scientist at NCAR, a SOURCE alumni, and a research mentor. Hi, Rosimar. Hi, hola. We have um, one of our students, Angeli Nieves Jimenez. She's a SOURCE protege and a student at the University of Puerto Rico in Maya West. Hi, Angeli. Hi, everyone. It's nice to have you here. And we also have Agbeli Ameko. He's an associate scientist in CISL, the Outreach, Diversity, and Education Group. Hi, Agbeli. Hi, everyone. See, so we have a great group of people here um, to speak with you today. But first, Dan, can you um, show us what is the word cloud looking like for people who are participating through Slido? And when you think of the um, when you think of scientific research internship, people have saying an opportunity to gain specific knowledge and network, laboratory, lots of numbers, <laughs> um, conducting group or individual research, working under scientists for professional development, research opportunity regarding a scientific topic, and this opportunity. But a biggest one is network opportunity to gain specific knowledge and network. So thank you all for letting us know what um, you're thinking about. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to um, our first panelist, Jerry Sicconi, who will talk about some of the programs at NCAR, and then we'll just kind of go through the line. If you have questions after each of our panelists present, definitely um, we'll be able to take those questions. And for all of, you, all of you who have submitted questions prior to the event, we have them up on Slido for our panelists to um, answer as well. So Jerry, um, I'll welcome you back and I'll hand it over to you. Hello everybody again, just give me one second. I am going to share my screen. And there we go. 
All right. Well, my name is Jerry Sacconi. I am the NCAR Education and Outreach Student Program Coordinator. I've been at NCAR in some capacity for about four plus years. I've been in this role for just over a year. And I'm excited to talk to you about some of our opportunities for undergraduates, graduates, and postdocs that we have here at NCAR, UCAR, and USP. And Lorena already kind of mentioned a little bit, but I just want to talk a little bit about a uh, little bit more about NCAR. NCAR is a federally funded research and development center. It stands for National Center for Atmospheric Research, and it serves a broad community, um, including atmospheric and geospace scientists and researchers in complementary areas of the Earth system sciences. NCAR is managed by the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research, which is UCAR, and is funded by the National Science Foundation, the NSF. So why do an internship? I'm sure some of you are asking yourselves that. I mean, if you're here, you have thought about it. And what I'll say to you is there's a few reasons why you could why you should do an internship, one of which being that research has shown that participating in an internship is the most heavily weighted attribute considered by employers when evaluating a recent college graduate's resume. So what an internship can do is really help make your resume stand out in a sea of other candidates. Some other things doing a, a research, uh, excuse me, an internship can do for you is find out if you enjoy doing research in the first place. Um, I started in a more research role uh, here at NCAR and I've moved more into education and outreach uh, because I realized that's what I love doing and that's something that really spoke to me. You may find in doing research that that's where you want to be and we all have our different paths. Also, while at NCAR, you'll be able to meet peers and colleagues in science from all across different disciplines of science uh, and network, and which is one of the things that I saw in the word cloud that was just posted. Also, you can learn skills that are valued by employees in grad schools, some of which include project experience, communication skills, decision making, and professionalism. So let's go through some undergraduate opportunities that we have in NCAR, UCAR, and UCP. So I'm going to list through some of these, and then I'm going to go into depth on some of them further in our next slide. So to start off, we have our Earth Observatory Lab Super Program, uh, which is EOL, EOL TIP program, our HAO, which is the High Altitude Observatory Bold Program. We have the REU in Space Physics, which is a research uh, experience for undergraduates, uh, and that's in space and solar physics. We have an ACOM, which is one of our labs uh, internship, a Unidata internship, which is also one of our other labs at NCAR. We have the ULW program, which is the Undergraduate Leadership Workshop. And we have the SciParks program that AG will talk about later and the UCAR Source program that Kadidia will talk about later. I'd also like to bring up before I go any further, the NCAR internship, which is a new internship that we're offering at NCAR. It will be for six students. We're looking at about split between undergraduate and, and graduate students. And it will be an internship in computational sciences, atmospheric, excuse me, atmospheric sciences. Uh, we have not posted yet for this, uh, for applications. It will be after the new year, so keep an eye out for that. And you can continue to follow uh, if you jump into the link that's below. And I believe we're going to offer this uh, slide deck as a PDF uh, after uh, this event and will be sent to you. So you'll be able to check out those links. And I'd like to say that all of our programs basically run from May to August. Uh, this past year, it ran till I think the end of July, and that's just how the calendar worked out. But usually they're about 10 weeks, except for the ULW, and I'll talk about that later. Uh, they cover a salary, housing and travel when applicable. As of right now, we're obviously in COVID and there isn't much traveling going on. Um, so that has uh, constrained us somewhat on that end. Uh, hopefully at some point within the next year or so we can get back to somewhat closer to normal. Uh, and also just to let you know, in some cases, we will fund a trip to a national conference for you to present the work that you've done here at NCAR. Some of the other things that NCAR does offer within your intern experience uh, is science communication training, career planning, and cohort building. And this is part of a professional development workshop series that we offer students that are weekly through your internship. This past year, we did it on Thursdays. They're about two hours long. And there are topics every, every from things that uh, 
everything from leadership training, diversity, equity, inclusion training, uh, science communication. And at the end of your summer, we'll prep you and help you get ready for the virtual poster symposium for you to be able to present the work that you've done over the summer to scientists at NCAR faculty and peers. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit further in depth into some of the programs that we have and I talked about earlier. The super program, is for those interested in engineering and instrumentation. And the super program accepts usually about four students. And you will be able within this internship to develop new to develop new instruments, have a chance to improve on our existing suite of lower atmosphere observing facilities. And some of the past projects, as you can see listed, have to do with hardware design, signal processing, data visualization, and disciplines such as electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, aerospace, physics, and math. We also have the REU experience for solar and space physics. And this is a 10 week program that is a collaboration between NCAR's HAO, uh, High Altitude Observatory and CU Boulder. And it gives students interested in solar and space physics an opportunity to work with, uh, with Boulder institutions. Uh, and and uh, this is also uh, for undergrads, excuse me, for undergraduates to apply for a paid summer research experience for highly motivated students interested in solar and space physics. We have the Unidata Software Development Internship. And this is for undergraduates and graduates soft, for software engineers and scientists on projects in atmospheric and computational, computational sciences. Application uh, applications are now open and the deadline is the 22nd of January. They take about three to four students and Unidata does as the other internships I mentioned before do take uh, part in the NCAR UCAR wide intern activities, including the end of summer poster session. For more information, as with the other slides, uh, you can check out the Unidata website link below. Next, we have the undergraduate leadership workshop. And this is a workshop that I co-lead along with Tim Barnes in our science sci-ed department. It is a five-day immersion experience at NCAR. We went virtual this past summer for the first time. We, ex we accept about 20 students. And it's for students that are interested in an opportunity to explore careers in atmospheric sciences and really to develop your leadership potential. Uh, as I said, it's a five-day immersion experience. Uh, and this is slightly different than other programs that we offer in that we usually, what we do is in January, we reach out to atmospheric departments and we ask for faculty, faculty to nominate someone for this program. Now, if you're interested in this program and you want to be nominated, you may want to reach out to a faculty member at your institution and ask that faculty member to nominate you. Uh, we will start, I believe, in around the middle of January with opening applications and the application uh, process is open up until mid-March and we usually select in April. Now, some graduate student opportunities to talk about. We have the ASP Graduate Visitor Program and through the ASP Graduate Visitor Program, Graduate students basically can come to NCAR from anywhere from two to 12 months to work on their thesis or equivalent project, final project with guidance from an NCAR scientist. Uh, we typically sponsor about 20 to 25 students per year. Unfortunately, right now, the application process closed in October. So uh, applications uh, process is, is done for this year and going into 2021. It will reopen in October of 2021 for the 2022 cohort. So if you are about to be a graduate student or be a graduate student at that time next year, this may be something that you'd want to consider. The ASP Colloquia. And this is a two week long uh, event during summer. It also holds around 25 students. And the next one coming up, I believe is in July. It's titled The Science of Subseasonal to Seasonal Predictions. Uh, this, uh, these colloquia overall are designed for graduate students that are working on or would like to work on new or rapidly developing areas of research in which there's not a lot of coursework material for you to use. And so what, 
ASB Colloquia does is brings together lecturers and graduate students from NCAR and the community at large. We also conduct some modeling workshops, including the CESM workshop, the WARF tutorial, the MPAS tutorial, uh, the Hurricane WARF tutorial. And those are uh, available throughout the year are, and are great ways to learn more about modeling and to um, participate in these workshops that bring uh, like-minded uh, scientists who enjoy modeling or want to know more about modeling together. Moving on to the BRIGHT workshop. Now, the BRIGHT workshop, which stands for Broadening Participation in the Interdisciplinary Geosciences, Hands-On Training on Education. It's a little bit of a mouthful, right? So that's why BRIGHT sounds better. Well, it's a workshop that provides opportunity for participants to embrace a, a, an interdisciplinary approach to scientific and societal changes. And some of the things in the past for during the BRIGHT, uh, Bright workshop have included, but not limited to, human health and weather disasters, food security, and also climate adaptation. We have a few other graduate programs and fellowships, including the Heliophysics Summer School, uh, which is a short summer school that focuses on uh, space and solar physics, the influence of atmospheres, ionospheres, and magnetospheres throughout the solar system. We have an, another space science program, which is the Boulder Space Weather Summer Schools for undergraduates and graduates. And that's a two-week program funded by the NSF. We have the UCAR Next Generation Fellowship. Uh, and this is, as it says, intended for graduate students from underrepresented communities. And the UCAR Next Gen Fellowship offers three distinct tracks, one in Earth System Science, one in Diversity and Inclusion, and one in Public Policy. And just a few other graduate student opportunities that we offer are the Ralph Chikarone Fellow Fellowship, the Newkirk Fellowship, and the Najib E. Halaby Fellowship, which you can find more information if you follow the link below. We also have postdoctoral post opportunities uh, that are available to you at NCAR, UCAR, and UCP, one of which being the ASP uh, fellowship and the LS ASP postdoctor fellowship is basically the granddaddy or the grandmama of the programs that we have at NCAR. It's been around for about 50 years. It's an excellent opportunity to conduct, conduct in, uh, independent research at NCAR and ASP fellows uh, are mentored by leading NCAR scientists and engineers. They benefit from the breadth of science and training happening at NCAR and many uh, ASP fellowship program graduates have gone on uh, to occupy prominent positions in the university community or at NCAR. Uh, as stated earlier with our undergraduate programs and how we offer professional development workshops, we do the same for our, for our postdocs. And so we offer workshops on career and professional development and social events for them as well. So it's, uh, it's a great program and a great chance to have um, to connect with with interns and graduate students and, and postdocs from across NCAR. Some other UCARs, and this, excuse me, some UCAR postdoctoral opportunities. We have the NOAA Climate and Global Change Postdoc, excuse me, postdoctoral fellowship program. And that's offered through CPAS, which is the Cooperative Programs for Advancement of Earth System Science. And it's on behalf of the NOAA Climate Program Office. We also have the NASA Heliophysics Jack Eddy Postdoctor Fellowship. And Jack Eddy uh, was a pioneering solar researcher, and he was honored with the debut of the Jack Eddy Postdoctor Postdoctoral Fellowship in 2009. And the goal of the program is basically to train the next generation of researchers needed for the emerging field of, he field of heliophysics. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you um for joining us today uh, i believe next up will be aj and lorena will jump in here in a second and i just want to say apply 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 uh, you're not going to get accepted to any internships that you don't apply for so apply apply for as many as you think that you'd like to be a part of we look forward to seeing your applications and hopefully look forward to seeing you here at ncar whether virtually or in person at some time <laughs>
Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Jerry, so much for sharing all about like an overview of what are some of the projects that or research internships, excuse me, that are available to students from early career stage to undergraduate and graduate students. I think we have quite a bit of different um, grades or career levels here. And I do want to ask um, one of the questions that I'm seeing coming in about, are there opportunities that combine atmospheric and space sciences? And Dan, I don't think you have to post that question up real quick, but I think um, just for the purpose of like asking that question, because it did come in as a previously submitted question. Um, and I think you might have mentioned some of these already. Yeah, I, we, we have some for undergraduate. We have some that are specific for graduate students as well. Uh, as I said, we I believe, uh, Lorena, can you confirm that we'll be sharing this slide deck to participants, a PDF version, so that they can uh, check uh, the links that were added, that were uh, uh, linked to this uh, slide deck. Yeah, we can do that. And then, um, so there are opportunities to combine atmospheric and space sciences, but I think it's more of like the upper atmosphere, ionosphere, um, kind of like the space weather aspect of the interaction of space weather with the atmosphere. So um, there's always room to, um, one of the cool things about the programs at NCAR are that the scientists and the students get to talk with each other to kind of formulate this research that the student has interest in and that the research scientist is also um, actively conducting. Thank you, Jerry, so much. And with that, um, I'll pass it over to AJ uh, to talk about the Site Parks program with Sizzle. Take it Thank away, AJ. Thank you, Lorena and J Jerry. Uh, let me share my screen for y'all. Okay. So as Lorena said, my name is AJ Lauer. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the Outreach, Diversity, and Education team lead and the director of the SciParks program. SciParks stands for Summer Internships in Parallel Computational Science. That's why we call it SciParks because it's a terrible acronym. Um, I'm joined today by my colleague, Ag Belly Amico. He works with me in the Outreach, Diversity, and Education team. He's also one of our mentors for the SciParks program um, who gets a great chance to work with our students during the summertime. So the SciParks program was started in 2007 with the goal of building the workforce to run supercomputers around the world. And uh, it's changed quite a bit through the years. You can see that first picture on the left-hand side. We're actually not entirely certain if that's from the first or the second year, um, but it was a pretty small group of guys. Uh, the fellow right in the middle in black is actually one of our current mentors for the SciParks program. He now works at the organization uh, after having a great time in the SciParks program. So we're pretty happy to have him around. Uh, that middle group is our cohort from 2018. And you see them there at the poster session, which is the capstone project for the end of the summer. Um, and then on the right hand side is our picture of this summer. So we did host the SciParks program remotely this summer. We were very happy to be able to offer all of our interns the same positions that we were going to offer them even if they had come to Boulder. So we had a full cohort of 13 people working from wherever they were, whether that was Puerto Rico or Idaho or um, gosh, North Carolina, they were all over the place this year. Uh, so it was pretty great to be able to still have that cohort of students working together and learning together throughout the summer this year. Our projects in the SciParks program are largely technical, as you might expect by the name of it. Um, our students work on application optimization, they do data visualization, they optimize our supercomputers. Uh, this year we have a project that will be doing some science education. We have a really cool project that AgBelly works on uh, with 3D printed weather stations, and um, as well as a the WARF model, which, which is the weather research forecasting model, which we're running on Raspberry Pi units, which are super tiny little computers. Uh, and so we have someone who's going to have the opportunity to help us develop some educational modules around some of the technical work that we're doing. The photo on this picture is uh, something called Meteo AR, which was designed by one of our SciParks interns about three or four years ago. Uh, his name is Nihant Cherakuru, and Nihant now works full-time with us. So uh, he is serves as a mentor, and we've had a really great ability to develop a real relationship with him throughout his career. It's been really fun to watch him develop as a professional 
now working at NCAR. All of the requirements for these projects are listed on our website, which I will link to you for you on the last slide. So keep your eyes open for that. In the Side Parks program, we have three main focuses to make sure that we are providing a great experience for the students. One is making sure that the mentors are super well prepared. Two is providing those intern professional development opportunities that Jerry mentioned early, earlier. And three is having really candid, open conversations with the students throughout the summer. Uh, and so, it, you know, something that anybody who participates uh, won't see is that our mentors receive training on mentoring throughout the year. Uh, because the CyParks program has some focus on increasing the diversity of the HPC workforce, we want to make sure that our mentors are prepared to uh, really do a great job in working with any students that come in, even if that student maybe has a different life background than uh, the mentor does. And so we try to keep our mentors thinking about mentoring, keep them learning about it, keep them excited about it throughout the entire year so that when the students show up in the summer, they are ready uh, to go with the best, most um, recent knowledge about great mentoring practices when everybody comes. The professional development, of course, is not all just sitting in Zoom calls usually uh, or sitting in a room watching somebody talk at you. It's very active. Our students have the opportunity to visit our supercomputing center and get a behind the scenes tour that lasts about two hours and they really get to hear the nitty gritty of the data management and the building management and um, they get to see all the cabling that runs underneath the supercomputers, all of that really cool tech stuff. Uh, we do, as Jerry mentioned, leadership development with the students, which is a a lot of hands-on activities and self-exploration and doing some group work to figure out what your leadership style is and how you work with others. Um, and then we do a lot of fun stuff too. That last photo on the right-hand side is some students from two years ago out for a hike. Uh, something that you probably can't tell from this presentation is that if you do have the chance to visit our Mesa lab, uh, that is actually a trailhead. And so from our parking lot, you can get up into the mountains, you can hike for 15, 20 miles if you want to. So our students often take advantage of that opportunity over lunch times uh, and through scheduled activities as well. And all of this is designed to help the students be successful, not only with their end of summer capstone presentations and posters and those kinds of things, but also moving forward in their career. And the last thing is that we're really intentional about having lots of conversations with the students about where they want to go. Um, the, what you're looking at here is two days from my schedule over the summertime. It's a Wednesday and a Thursday. Uh, on Wednesdays during the summertime in the morning, we have something called Women's Mentoring Brunch, where we pull together scientists and computer scientists from across the organization and give women interns the opportunity to have some frank conversations about what it means to be a scientist. Um, You'll also see all sorts of little tiny appointments all over this. And that is my, my week three check-in with all of the students. I meet with every single student in week three and week nine to make sure that they're doing okay, have career conversations and those kinds of things. Um, and then you'll also see there's a larger block on the right-hand side that's one of those professional development workshops. This one was the diversity and inclusion workshop that we hold at the beginning of the summer at some point. Um, as far as you know, navigating future careers, for us in the SciParks program, we're obviously really excited when people can decide to continue into computer science, decide to get doctorates, whatever it is. But we're also really proud of our SciParks alumni who owns their own coffee shop. <laughs> um, we have someone who, you know, roasts their own coffee beans and manages their own business. And that's also extremely cool for us. That person came through SciParks, they finished school, they decided that computing wasn't for them and they found a new path and they're super happy and super successful. And that for us um, is really great. Measuring that success can be challenging for an internship program. Um, and one of the ways that we do that, aside from just anecdotal stories, is through publications, because publications is the, you know, the language of scientists. We all understand what it means when you get a publication. And so um, we measure the number of publications that our alumni get after participating in the SciParks program. So that you know could be something that we maybe um, had an influence on as well as their publications that they do with NCAR staff, because we can be pretty sure that students um, have that came from the program. So we've had 142 publications with NCAR staff and through the years we've had about 15 alumni serve as NCAR staff. This last page is a QR code, which you can click on to join our email list. 
We promise not to spam you with lots of email. We only send about eight per year and it's only about application information. Um, we send out opportunities for extra internships. We send out the, U the ULW links. We send out the SOARS application links, all of that kind of stuff. Any opportunities that you have to engage with NCAR and learn more about us and take advantage of our resources. So I highly encourage you to click on that. Otherwise, um, visit us at www.sizzle.ucar.edu slash sideparks. Thanks, everyone. That's so awesome. Thank you so much, AJ. It's great to see what the computational aspect of atmospheric science um, has, like that there are opportunities in computation, computational science in the atmospheric sciences. Um, so it's, it's really, really awesome. Important. It's thing. Right, like yeah, all these and, models um, that we run that talk about climate and weather and things that requires huge amounts of computation. And so we have to train people to be able to do it. Otherwise, how would our climate scientists be able to do their science? That's so awesome. And I know that this past year, you all hosted a virtual workshop. So unfortunately, unless you were already a boulder, you weren't able to take those hikes out in the back of the Mesa lab. So I wonder if you can um, briefly talk about um, one of our questions that we had been asked was, what is it like to participate in a virtual internship research program? Or just like a, a quick overview um, before we head over to Kadidia. Absolutely. So um, students meet with their mentors mostly every day during a remote internship. Obviously, um, you can't just walk down the hall to visit your mentor's office. So we encourage our mentors to be very intentional about setting up that time every day. Um, we have those professional development workshops every week. Uh, and then we also have check-ins on Monday and Thursday with the program team. So that would be me, Ag Belly, um, our staff person, Virginia, who's not here today. Um, um, and then we have lots of social things. So we'll have trivia night or um, everybody playing video games or group Netflix watching all of that kind of stuff uh, as social opportunities. So it's much like a regular job, but we try to sprinkle in all the other professional development and fun stuff too. That's great. Cause I feel like one of the most important things that, um, that comes out of these programs is that network and that cohort mm -hmm. that keep connecting with each other beyond the summer program. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, we set up a Slack channel for our students this summer and they're still all chatting in there. That's so great. Well, thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing all those resources and information. I know for everybody watching that it's it's a lot to take in as of right now. Um, there was a question uh, on Slido that asks, can a full comprehensive list of all the official opportunities and programs and their applications be posted as there are multiple sites for some of them? And um, just so, uh, just as a response to that, I do wanna um, direct you all to the ucar.edu website with slash forward slash AGU 2020 forward slash workshops underscore tutorials. But if you just go into the AGU 2020 workshop, uh, AGU 2020 website that was recently created, there is uh, some, a uh, list of some of the programs and opportunities available. Um, but if you check out uh, Heidi Kyler's um, comment on Slido and you check the re response that was added, the link is there for you all to check out. Um, so thank you so much, AJ. And um, next, I want to introduce Kadidia Tiero with the Source Program. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the, the Source Program? And yes, thank you so much, Lorena. And thank you so much, AJ and Jerry. The Source Program, what does Source mean? Source means significant opportunities in atmospheric research and science. Again, my name is Kadidia Tiero. I am the principal investigator and program lead of SOARS. SOARS is a program that has been around since 1996. Next slide, please. This is our team. And uh, we have a very small team, but a very impactful team. And we do have uh, lots of dedication, workshops, professional development, like all of the other uh, internships you've heard about thus far. Next slide, please. This is our cohort from 2020 this past summer, and you'll be hearing from one of our protégés and her mentor in a, in a bit. But uh, we had eight protégés this past summer, which was a virtual program. SOARS is a program that is multi-year, and so we're able to bring students back up 
to four summers per year. You have to start an undergraduate. You can't be a graduate student, but if you are in the program, you can come back as a graduate student to participate. Next slide, please. So I just want to give you a few highlights of what the program does and what we can offer and what outcomes we've had thus far. In its 24 year history, we've had approximately 216 protégés from underrepresented groups in STEM. That is SOAR's mission to broaden participation in STEM and atmospheric sciences. Uh, right now, currently there are 62 students protégés and alumni who are enrolled in bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degree programs. 203 bachelor degrees have been completed. 130 alumni have completed master's levels advanced degrees, and 51 alumni have earned their doctoral degree. Currently, there are 29 in PhD programs right now, and many of the alumni have multiple degrees, not just MSs, BSs, but JDs, MAs, MBAs. So it's wide open. You can do whatever you want. The picture below is a picture of our alumni and protégés at an actual conference called the AMS, American Meteorological Society. That was earlier this year in January, and we had a gathering um, of 40 plus protégés and alumni. So we were really excited. Everyone um, presents at conferences after you've done your uh, research in the summer. And I'll talk a little bit about the programming um, in a minute, but wanting to uh, expressly talk about the community building. So SOARS is built on research, community, and mentoring. And community is very important. We stay in touch. The alumni is engaged with the program. So just something for you to know, you've been hearing in all of the presentations that networking is important. So yes, networking is important. And this network has become a family. Next slide, please. So this past summer, it was virtual. The well-being, mental health, and managing the effects of the global pandemic as well as the US's racial reckoning were complex challenges that the entire country continues to deal with and process. Our protégés just demonstrated grace under pressure and completed all the required deliverables. In our deliverables, we have an abstract due, a poster due, a final paper, as well as a research colloquium. Uh, all of the protégés were matched with their research mentors and writing mentors. In some cases, we had community mentors, computation, and peer mentors. So that's what's unique about SOARS. We have a five mentor model, and each protege can have up to five mentors when they begin the program. The theme, unsurprisingly, this year was adaptability, flexibility, and resilience. Our program began on the 26th of May, and we had orientation, which included leadership training, ethics and safety overviews, diversity, equity, and inclusion training, as well as mentors and protégés team meetings. So because protégés have multiple mentors, we all meet as a team prior to their arrival, as well as during the program so that everybody is working together in service of the student. Next slide, please. I mentioned that we had workshops. So in addition to your research internship, you will have workshops. And one is a scientific communication and writing workshop, as well as a computation and data science workshop. These workshops happen on Fridays uh, with your cohort. And we also have professional development. The pictures below show what happened this past summer. In our writing workshop, we had an elevator speech. We learned how to do elevator speech because we do presentations all the time, but it's, elevator speeches are not just for your research. They're just for you, for you to explain anything that you'd like to talk about your, you know, getting into graduate school, it's helpful, what your goals are, but also to give an idea about your project in a sound bite, basically. Uh, the next picture shows uh, class. Uh, in computation and data science where people are working on Python and geoscience libraries. So that's one of the other um, aspects of this program. All of these workshops are weekly. Next slide, please. 
I'll just read one of the highlights from one of the protégés from the summer. We asked, we also survey the protégés at midpoint as well as the end of summer. Um, in your opinion, what are the most valuable aspects of the SOARS program? Please think about research, mentoring, and community aspects. Please also describe the degree to which you feel like you contributed to the field. So the quote is, the ability to work with and learn from professionals is the best part about SOARS. My mentors have an incredible amount of experience and knowledge, so there's much to learn from them. I feel like my project is on track to have a decent impact in the field, and I'm very happy with my results thus far. Next slide. So I wanted to tell you that we have a picture of an actual cohort in person in Boulder 2019, and we have the flat irons behind us. Uh, for the most part, you saw pictures of screenshots because this past summer, again, was virtual. Typically, when we are in person, we have a cohort of about 20 students. Uh, we have the information our, um, on the slide, but you'll be getting a copy. Uh, our application will likely be available in December, and we are deciding when we'll close application date because we are pretty sure we're going to be virtual next summer. We want to give students the opportunity to completely think about and fill out the application. And that's all I have for right now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kadidia. That's so great to be able to see what it's like to have the full scope of the research internship. Um, so we had uh, Jerry and AJ mentioning the the weekly workshops that NCAR interns receive. And this one, it sounds like you also have a workshop that's a weekly one with professional development. So that's awesome to hear that. Um, across NCAR and UCAR, there are these opportunities for students to engage with research and to build their professional development and skills. And I love Definitely. that you also said that there was a space. Yeah, I love that there's also a space for you to acknowledge like the state of the world. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, um, it's hard with COVID. There's a lot of um, civil like issues that need to be resolved and it's just feeling of loneliness. So it's great to show that you can also build the cohort and build resilience through this, um, through these challenges. So thank you for sharing all of that. You're welcome. And I did have a question. Um, you mentioned, uh, you know, these are all um, virtual programs right now. And one, one question was, are there any opportunities for international students or is this more of like a domestic, um, funded program? Well, like for people who are, is, um, yeah, international students. SOARS is a, a NSF core funded program. In our program, you can be a permanent resident um, and or US citizen to participate. Thank you. And AJ, would you be able to share a little bit about the Sci Parks program as well? Yeah, so for the Sci Parks program, and I believe, and Jerry will have to nod at us to affirm this, um, for the NCAR internship as well, students can be international students as long as they are able to work in the United States. So they have to provide proof of their CPT or their OPT authorization to work in the US. Great, thank you so much. And I think um, always keeping an eye out on what's happening in the world of the pandemic. We'll also have um, some limitations on just travel as of right now. I think we're like Kadita, you mentioned kind of slated for virtual world of programming. So it's great to hear um, the positive, positive outcomes that have come across like in this past year um, with the virtual programming. So thank you both. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions I also wanted to ask since um, Kadidia and AJ, you were still there. Um, I wanted to ask about what are the traits or skills that are desired or what are some major requirements that um, you can kind of talk about? And I know we, we're still getting to Rosimar and Anjali to talk about the mentorship and the student um, program in Ag Valley. So um, I know it's we're crunching on time, but I do also want to mention for anybody viewing, if we don't get to your questions today, we will have an opportunity for office hours that you can talk with Jerry and connect to get any more of your questions answered. Um, but I'll pass it over to you all about some of the, the key skills desired or any major requirements for your programs. Okay, sure. 
for SOARS, uh, you uh, have to have an interest in STEM. Uh, the application requires two essays, one about diversity and leadership and career and pathway. And we um, accept all STEM students. Uh, you have to have a minimum 3.0 GPA to um, apply. And there are two recommendations at present. The essays really do count a lot. We wanna know um, what you are interested in pursuing. Um, you do not have to have prior research experience. This is an opportunity for you to decide whether this is the pathway for you. So, you know, it's one of those things. Internships are meant to determine if you like your area or you may want to change your focus. So those are pretty much the main requirements. Thanks, Kadidia. Yeah, so for the Site Parks program, we list the requirements um, on all of the project descriptions. So if you visit our website, you'll see the list of all 12 projects that we have available this summer. And at the bottom of each project, it'll say we need you to have experience in you know, Python scripting or general coding experience and anything, and we'll teach you anything else you need. Uh, this year's projects range from, you know, anybody who's interested in any kind of science and computational science to educators for the science education project, all the way to super specific things that only graduates who are interested in a very specific part of computer science are going to even know what those words mean. And so we have a wide range of students and requirements for what we need for the Site Parks program. So just check out the website and see uh, where you fit. Like Kadidia said, our application is very similar. We expect a resume, a transcript, so that we can verify if there are course requirements, that you probably have those course requirements. Um, and we expect a cover letter. The cover letter is super important. If you apply to Sci Parks, follow all of the directions. If you don't answer one of our required questions for the cover letter, you will probably get thrown out. We have hundreds of applications every year. And so uh, people who don't follow directions don't make it very far through the process. So please give us all of the information we ask for when you apply. That's so great. Thank you both for sharing and Jerry for sharing information about the programs um, as an overview. And I now want to go over to Rosie Marr, who was a student for the SOARS program. And then she was an ASP postdoc. And now she's a project uh, scientist. She's a scientist at NCAR um, and a mentor, giving back to the SOARS program as a mentor. Um, but I'll pass it over to you if you can give us uh, some, some information about who you are and what that science mentorship program looks like at SOARS. Sure. Thank you, Lorena. Well, I am Rosima Rios Rios. I am a scientist at NCAR, and that means that I spend most of my days uh, doing research about hurricanes in particular. But in addition to that, I get to be a science mentor. So I want to tell you very briefly about my journey with going from being a mentee to being a science mentor. So I'm originally from Puerto Rico, and I went to my to undergrad there at the University of Puerto Rico at Maya West. I knew that I wanted to study meteorology for graduate school. So I did a summer internship at NCAR through the SOURCE program in 2011. And I got to um, have such a wonderful, um, enriching and very uh, growing experience being a mentee at NCAR. And I was especially um, impacted by the amount of time and energy that my mentors spend trying to help me uh, learn not only about the atmospheric sciences and hurricanes in particular, but also about how to code, how to um, write a, a scientific article, how to give a presentation. Um, it was really, really um, a life-changing experience and it confirmed my desire to pursue a career in science. From there, I did. Uh, um, I went to uh, graduate school at the University of Albany in SUNY, and I got a PhD in atmospheric sciences. And I was very, very fortunate that after that, I landed a scientist position at NCAR. And now I get to work, like I said, as a scientist, but also I get to mentor 
students from SOURCE. I got to do that for um, the first time a couple of years ago, first with Keenan, who's now a graduate student at Penn State. And for the past two years, I got to mentor Anjali first in person in 2019 and then in virtually in 2020. And I would like to say that it's truly, it truly keeps being a growing experience because as an intern, I was learning so much and I was so eager to learn. But now as a mentor, I still am learning. Um, my mentees teach me, but I'm also um, learning how to educate and guide other stu uh, students. But I don't wanna take much more time. Instead, I wanna pass it over to Anjali who can tell you more about her experience being a mentee. Yeah, everyone. Hi, my name is Angeli Nieves Jimenez. I'm an undergraduate senior student at the University of Puerto Rico, Mayagüez. And I'm studying industrial engineering and atmospheric science and meteorology. And I'm a soon to be and hopefully a third year source protege over the 2021 summer. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my experiences as a source student. First, um, when I was in person and now virtually. Um, the main important the, the main important thing to know is that I got to do research and that is the most important thing I got to learn I gained a lot of knowledge and I got to network connect with peers um it is a learning curve for everyone but that is why your mentors are there for for helping you through that process I came into Boulder knowing nothing, knowing nothing about research. And well, Rosemar can tell you a little bit about that, that um, my first paper compared to this year's paper maybe improved a little bit. And that is um, mainly due to the help that we get in the professional development and the writing workshops and in the computing sessions. And also with the help of our mentors, I remember I I went to Rosemar's office or Kelly's maybe like two times a day. And now virtually we plan meetings during the week. And that that is how we get to conduct research now. Um, I don't know, Rosemar, if you want to add anything to that, like comparing last year to this year. Well, first of all, I would like to add that you did know <laughs> a lot of stuff um, and you did learn along the way. So you did have um, a background already by having taken your classes and having just the interest in doing science. That's how it goes for everybody. That's how it was for me. And um, the other thing I want to say is that indeed we did see the difference from one year to the next um, in how you grew, how like you, your skills uh, advanced so much from one year to the next. And I would like to uh, recognize that not all the internships that we offer at NCAR offer you the opportunity to come back, but you will see the impact when you go into your next step. That doesn't have to be a second internship at NCAR. It could be another internship somewhere else. It could be when you go on to graduate school or to the professional world. You will see that the skills that you earn through a summer internship like will pay off later on in your career. Yeah, something that I wanted to say about that is that if you're uncertain whether to do research or not, I encourage you to do so because it's good to step out there to meet to know what you wanna do in the future and to know the path you wanna to go to. Um, and it is important because um, thanks to the internship um, to Source and NCAR, I've met um, great graduate school advisors, um, which is important because if I wanna to go to grad school, I wanna meet with the people I wanna work with and know how, they're, how they are. And it is also important because it opens many doors. Um, I've been to many um, conferences um, since like from last year to this year, um, like four conferences, and that is a lot in a year. Um, you gain a lot of experience and a lot of um, knowledge too. That's so great. Thank you, Anjali, for sharing about that and Rosimar for sharing um, your like path into being a scientist and now a mentor. 
And one of the things I'm curious about is, um, Anjali and Gautamar, can you talk about what was the importance of like having that mentorship opportunity? Um, Cause I know there's a structure with SOARS where you have multiple mentors for different aspects of the program, which, which can help build that support network. Sure, so I can start uh, by saying that at SOARS, uh, one of the greatest things is that you get a whole team of mentors. There's a science mentor or science mentors. In the case of Anjali, there were two mentors. So myself and as well as Kelly Warner, also from NCAR. And you also have a writing mentor, somebody who helps you with uh, your writing assignments, with your presentations and your poster. Um, you also, in some cases, have a computational mentor or a, um, a computational mentor, and that's somebody that may help you uh, write code or debug your code or anything that has to do with the computing aspect of your internship. If you're a new intern, you also get a coach, and that's somebody that helps you navigate the um, first experience of doing a summer internship. And if you're in person, it would be a first experience perhaps being in Boulder. If it's virtually, it could be a first experience doing an internship virtually, which can look very different than a new person. And also, uh, lastly, you get a peer mentor, which is somebody that is already in the source program, but is uh, in the second or third year. And that person gets to mentor the first year um, mentor. And yeah. for me, it was incredibly important to have that whole team. But um, especially for me, I was, um, I wasn't sure that I had what it got to be a scientist. And it was really, really helpful and encouraging and inspiring to have mentors because um, they like, not only taught me and guided me in my research, but they reaffirmed that I could do it. And they stayed in touch after the fact. And that's something I tried to do with Anjali. I may not be as good as my mentors were with me, but I, it, it's something that, you know, they say once a mentor, always a mentor. And that was very true for me. My mentors stayed in touch with me. One of them became my professor in graduate school. And they always showed up whenever I needed a letter of recommendation or some piece of advice because I was in the point of making a decision or something like that. And yeah, I cannot imagine yeah. where I would have been had I not had that mentorship experience. That's so awesome. Thank you so much. And I know we're running into the hour time frame, but I did want to bring in Egg Belly um, because he is also a SOARS mentor now has been working with the Sci Park Sizzle program. But one of the coolest things that I, I've been finding and learning about with any of the internships at NCAR, UCAR, and UCP are that there are continuing collaborations that continue beyond the summer. And Egg Belly, um, you work with a uh, 3D printed weather stations and have been working with somebody from the ULW program. Oh, there it is. And you've also be able to, would have been able to connect Anjali with a student um, all in Puerto Rico. So in the next like minute or two, sorry for the, for the time crunch, but can you tell us a little bit about how that developed and what was, how that was so important in increasing the data research? Yes, so one of our students was at the, uh, who applied for and got into the uh, SciParks program, he was to work, his project was to work at the Supercomputing Center doing hardware um, at the Supercomputing Center here. But since everything was locked down, he was still in Puerto Rico and working remotely on some of the supercomputing um, material. However, he had some extra time or additional time to do field work. So what we did was we shipped these uh, 3D printed weather stations down to um, down to Stephen and also Angelie was there in um, in Puerto Rico, where these where these stations uses these 3D printed the 3D printed stations they use these little microcontrollers that are connected to sensors, and these sensors upload data. And the more sensors you have, the more data you have. So it becomes a computational problem as you scale it. So Angeli worked with uh, and Stephen worked together locally to help test the station. Of course, it rains a lot in Puerto Rico. You get a lot of either hurricanes, you get a lot of different um, extreme weather events. So we've tested it and sort of working with the stations. And now we're actually deploying more 
um, stations. So we'll have a network, uh, what you call a mesonet of 10 stations down in, uh, in, in Puerto Rico. So that's a way to basically supplement some of the modeling work that Angeli was doing, which was looking at how to run high resolution forecast models over Puerto Rico, which has topographic or orographic effects by increasing the density of weather stations over the particular island that, that give you a better understanding of how to model those particular mesoscale phenomena. So that's sort of the core of the project. And it was great to have the opportunity to work with them. Yeah, at Belly, um, thanks to you and Keith, um, we are able now to get some observational data for um, my future research. So we, we thank you for that because um, we lack of observational data here in the island. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Great. And with that, I'll invite all of our panelists, if you can turn on your cameras as we um, thank you for taking the time today to share about your programs to answer some of the questions that we've had. Um, and again, for anybody who is interested in asking more questions about NCAR UCAR UCP, you can always reach out to the program leads through the website um, uh, contact information. In addition, Jerry will have, will be hosting or will be sending out an email to everybody who has registered for this event to share a Google form if you're interested in continuing the conversation, asking some more questions that we weren't able to answer today. And there's more. If you are attending the AGU, the American Geophysical Union Conference or the American Meteorological Society Conference, so it's either in December or in January, we will be having our NCAR UCAR UCP booth where you can come and ask us questions and also ask HR questions. Um, about any careers at NCAR UCAR. So with that, I want to say thank you, Jerry, AJ, Kadidia, Rosimar, Angeli, Agbelli, and all our multimedia services um, uh, for helping us to create this event. And thank you to you for joining us today and for participating in our Slido. Um, we look forward to seeing you at another event. And thank you, everybody. We'll see you. Thank you.